You are listening to the Gritty Podcast, where we talk about all things gritty. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm Brian Call, and I'm joined by Brad Hunt. And today's podcast is with our friends over at Canvas Cutter. We were at the Western Hunt Expo the last few days. Yep. We sat down with the boys from Canvas Cutter. Uh, for those that don't know, Canvas Cutter does things made out of canvas. Uh, bed rolls. They got bed rolls. They got duffels. They got storage for your boots and your truck. They got tons of stuff. Apparel. Wall tents. Wall tents. They got some uh, a horse, lot of horse, horse gear. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great show. They also have, which I'm going to fill my trailer with. Uh, you guys may have seen my trailer build uh, e- episode. I, I, I've been scheming up some plans, but I honestly think the dirt bag seats. They're awesome. They're, you, they're bean bags, but yep. they're not like giant. They're comfortable. Mm-hmm. They're durable. You could toss them outside, toss them inside. Yep. They're they're water. Uh, they're they're weather uh, resilient. So it's kind of nice. I was thinking about. It, I was like, man, if we threw like four of those in there, just toss them around. Yeah, you could put them up against the wheel well too. Exactly. And then you don't have to deal with. You get that extra space because yep. it shouldn't impact. Especially if Instead you didn't of having a couch in there or something. Yeah, and especially if you didn't fill them up all the way. Yep. With the beads because the wheel well takes in. You just stuff some against, and you're like. You actually use oh, leverage yeah. the wheel well oh, absolutely. almost. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it look cool because the rest of the trailer is also having like four or five bunks in it, some on each end, yep. and those bunks all have canvas cutter bed rolls. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I wouldn't do it any other way because I can grab those bed rolls, roll them up, throw them in the side by side, cruise up to the top of a mountain, just toss them out, or in my jeep or something like that, or my truck, and uh, car yeah. camp on those particular hunts like Arizona's. That is a canvas cutter. We haven't been great about telling people how much time we spend in no. a bed roll. Or um, that we even trailer camp. A lot of guys yeah. were like, you guys are doing a trailer build? Yeah. Um, yeah, we probably use it on three to four hunts a year. Yep. I t- we haul my side-by-side out there. Ryan has uh, an... Uh, he doesn't have a... He just has a flatbed trailer for the side-by-side. For the side-by-side. I wanted to be able to drive my side-by-side into my cargo trailer, but also have my cargo trailer be... Uh, a conversion into yep. a, home base. a home base, you know, with the solar and with the heat. And I put a wood stove in mine. I insulated it, changed the door up. You know, there's a lot of cool things. I'm going to keep building it out just for fun on a budget. Uh, and uh, I think, I think you guys will enjoy it right now. It's dead of winter. So we're not going to work on it much yep. in the, in the short term, but it's a chilly spring, dude, well, I'm going to dive into that trailer and have some fun. My dad, uh, my dad was helping me. It's fun to build to do with my dad. But anyway, the canvas cutter gear, you know, it's perfect for that kind of camping, that kind of build, that kind of setup. It's versatile. Their um, bed rolls, I can't say enough. We've been using them for six or six years or so. Long time. Um, Long time. I mean, I was using it before I met Gritty. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. and they they are remarkable. They're more like a bivy sack almost, oh. um, but like more comfortable, more like a, they're just more durable yeah. too. They feel better. You're not going to backpack with this sucker. Nope. This is not that kind of piece of equipment, but we talk about how much we use it in this episode. It's well worth the listen. The guys at Canvas Cutter are going to break down uh, Seth and Schaefer, kind of, you know, some of the products, how they came up with them, what they're all about. We get into entrepreneurial stuff toward the end because they've been able to do some cool things, building a brand. Yeah. Um, they talk about some strategy, what they learned, what they didn't learn. But we just talk about fighting, you know, finding a way to make your dream become a reality. Mm-hmm. And that's a great conversation too. Not so much about the, the you know, the, the gear and stuff toward the end, the last, I don't know, 40 minutes or so is probably just about business. Yeah. And uh, it's an interesting conversation. I think you're going to enjoy this podcast. Uh, if you are in need of some gear, don't forget to go to the Go Hunt Gear Shop and uh, consider them instead of your Cabela's or your Bass or R-E-I. some of these. Uh, <laughs> or, like, like consider uh, going to Go Hunt as they got our back. They're definitely big time supporters of hunting. They are all hunters there. Yes. And our good friend Brady Miller, um, we love Brady. We love to see him succeed as well. So go over to Go Hunt, use their store as much as you can, and use the code Gritty because when you do, you save ten percent and you help us continue to do what we do. Yep. Uh, these these kind of shows and our films and so on. So we also have a bear tour coming your way. Check that out. If you are interested, we're going to Boise, uh, Idaho, and we're going to 
We're going to Missoula. Yep. Montana. Missoula, Montana, March 1st to the 3rd, and Boise is 8th through the 10th. And if you want to be there, it's a multi day event. Myself, Ryan Lampers, Mark Livesey, and uh, Brad Hunt and I are all four going to be there. Mm-hmm. We're going to tell you everything we know about bear hunting. It's going to be very informative. I mean, I'm doing most of the heavy lifting. I think <laughs> Livesey, you know, uh, he, he's not very good at presenting things or organizing his ideas. Right. So not it'll be all. it'll be mostly me. Uh, Ryan will be quiet, but he'll he'll add, he'll probably add some value. But uh, no, just kidding. Uh, Mark is killing it. I've seen some of the curriculum and what we're working on. Good. Everybody has a role to play. It's going to be fun. Hope we see you there. If you're interested in attending, go to westernbeartour.com and you'll find all the details there. But uh, we really hope to see you there. And this isn't the, the last time we're doing these. We'll kick off another set yep. next year. Maybe it won't be bears. Maybe it'll be elk. Maybe it'll be mule deer, something. But we're really um, trying out this new thing where we're trying to build some community. We're trying to build some one-on-one. I did a gritty film night at the at the Western Hunt Expo yep. on a Saturday night. The theater was packed. It was really fun. I want more of that. I want to engage personally with everybody. I want people to see movies that I create in a movie theater with lights down low. I I want to get to know other hunters. I want them a chance to hang out with like-minded hunters. I want to create culture. And uh, I think these sort of um, face-to-face events, they also empower people to to learn, to be entertained, to meet other people. Uh, The Western Hunting Summit has been a blessing, which is what Ryan and Hillary have done every June. The seating is limited, though, and they sell out almost right away nowadays after going on year four or five. Yeah, I don't know. I think at least four, at least year four. So, um, but we want more of that. So hopefully, if you can make it, we see you there. Go to westernbeartour.com, westernbeartour.com, and uh, sign up. As always, uh, we appreciate you. Please like and uh, share this video. Leave a comment on this video if you find it useful. Comments really help us uh, get our, the video seen through YouTube. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, like I said, like, and subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that. We try to get to all the comments in the description fields. When you leave those, we really engage there probably more than anywhere else. True. And, uh, so hit us up there if you have some questions. Now let's jump into this episode. Thanks for tuning in. And as always stay gritty. All right, folks, welcome to the gritty podcast. I am Brian call and I am in the canvas cutter, uh, booth at the Western hunt expo today. And I got a couple of awesome guests, good friends of mine. We got Seth Larson and we got Schaefer Summers over at uh, the booth as my two guests. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Canvas Cutter for folks who don't don't know about it. Uh, it's remarkable that you took a bedroll and made it into like a, let's see, like a lifestyle brand. Yeah. And... You had a, co- a bunch of cool new uh, products over the years that you're adding to the product line. Uh, it's just a very cool brand. You got great products. I want to talk about what you've got um, on the episode today. And for folks that are listening, we live. We there's not there's not a year we're not using canvas cutter a lot. The bed rolls are a staple. You know, we just don't we don't live without them. Yeah. They they go on so many more hunts than you know. I have people. I just did a trailer build podcast. I dropped a couple of days ago. So right. that. and uh, and today we dropped the one about the cubic mini wood stove that I installed in it and go into mm-hmm. deep depth on that. The canvas cutter bed rolls roll out on all the bunks, you know, in the in the trailer, and they're part of that system. Because then I can also roll them up, pull them out, and just go somewhere with them in the back of the side by side and right. drop them on the ground, whatever. The versatility is for car camping, you know, the cargo trailer situation. It's perfect. Super comfortable, versatile, dynamic. Now, the the thing about the the canvas cutter, like I could get a mattress and I could throw it down and I could put it some kind of bed in there and in my trailer. Yep. But I wouldn't be able to then just quickly roll it up and go somewhere. Yeah. Also, like sometimes it gets dusty, dirty, you know, nice inside spiders. spiders. It's like yeah. it's nice to be able to zip up inside of of the bag. Exactly. And if you're outside and you, I just throw it in there, like especially in some of these desert hunts, and we roll out in the side by side. When we were hunting coos this year, we were in Mexico. Mm-hmm. We just brought it in the side by side everywhere we went, and then we just 
we're like, dude, let's not go back tonight. We don't, we want to camp on this, de- on this buck in this, yep. on this basin. It's like an hour side by side cruise back to the Hacienda. Now let's not do that. We just throw it out, lay there, just go to sleep. That's right. the idea. That literally is the idea. And that is the beauty of it. Yeah. If, if you're a serious hunter, there are, oftentimes you go to check where elk are or a mule deer Mm -hmm. and they've moved. And now it's the game of finding them or figuring out their rotation and to be able to just wherever you end up, throw it out, sleep really, really good and wake up, roll it up, throw it back in the truck and, and go and do what you went to do. We deal with a camp. We used to bring a lampers and I would bring a base camp. Mm-hmm. Set up a teepee, throw a, a, a redundant like sleeping bag and pad and stuff in there and some gear at the trailhead, basically. Go all the way in because a lot of times we'll kill a bear, we'll kill a deer, we'll kill an elk. And we leave our camp there because we got multiple loads. Yeah. But you get back after a long pack out with a meat load, we got our canvas cutter just right there. We don't have to like have a redundant camp and it's more comfortable. Honestly, an air pad versus the canvas cutter, it's like yeah, oh my it's like a Tempur-Pedic yeah. mattress in there. <laughs> yeah, like you, you you lay down in there and it's super comfortable. Now I got a lot of comments from people going, I'm surprised that that you guys did this trailer build. You know, you guys go steep and deep. Mm-hmm. You guys are backpack dudes. I don't think the public realize some realize how much like car camping, side by side camping is done on our trips. So we don't particularly high highlight a ton of that uh you know we usually get the cameras rolling when we're like yeah in camping and the hunt cool. is going on i'm not trailhead like <laughs> yeah and i don't want people to know where we're at sure. stuff like that so yeah they don't they don't realize how much we do that but we're trying to incorporate it a little bit more into the films that's why you know showcasing the trailer and the build out and what we're doing there um, is going to be useful to, sh- to, for, for the audience to see. Um, and I, and I think, I think anyone who hasn't got themselves a canvas cutter bread roll, you know, they're, they're going to over time, they'll see it more and more and we'll realize make a shirt of this. Cause it's my sales pitch. It's my one coin yeah. term that it's I say so all true, the though. time. It's though, so true. Is you don't know you need one until you have one. Yeah. And that's really the case. Uh, you know, you describe when you get back from a hunt and you've got base camp there and it's nice to be able to lay in your canvas cutter and have a nice mm-hmm. place to rest, right? You're beat, yep. you're worn out. But the other the other side of that coin is when you first get there, oftentimes we're going after work or, you know, traveling through the night and we get there in the wee hours in the morning. You don't want to take the time to set up a base camp and get everything. Just grab your bedroll out and lay it out even for a few hours. Yep. You know, we do that all the time. Yep. And, um, so it's, it's just one of those pieces of gear that, yeah, it's not going to go into the back country with you and be this really s- cool, innovative, sexy product. But at the end of the day, sleep's super important. Yeah. I guarantee you will use it more than you think. Dude, that's it. So many customers are like, I think it's cool. I just don't know when I'd use it. And then they get it and they email us that. I use that thing all the time. I actually have it uh, rolled out at the side of my king size bed at home. Yeah, or king yeah. size bed because <laughs> it's awkward how many emails well, we get about that. It's really weird, it's dude. Like, sleeping on marriage the floor. Counseling. Yeah, I know we're ruining marriages one bed roll at a time. Yeah, well, we'll we'll uh, stay at a hotel, just a one bed cheap hotel room, mm-hmm. and then we'll yeah. the rest, the other three or four of us, will bring in our canvas cutters and crash on the floor, so yeah. we're not paying for multiple rooms. Yep, um, and that's a great point too, Brian, in that. One of the comments we get is, wow, that's expensive. And, and it is. It's an expensive piece of gear because it's, high quality. it's a lot of material that's high quality. They're not cheap to make, right? Yep. Um, but you save, you know, a few nights at a hotel yep. pays for your bedroll. We're, so, we're awful cheap. And we're so comfortable. Yeah, if you're cheap like, and you're in a cheap motel, yeah, <laughs> roll that sucker out on the bed regardless, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. <laughs> the other thing, too, for folks that don't know, haven't seen us leverage these. When you roll that cutter out and let's say it just pours rain or the snow comes down, it's like a mini shelter because you've got the poles that create like a dome uh, structure inside and it repels water. No problem. Repels snow. No problem. And so 
And then it just kind of shakes off. You can roll that thing up and toss it right back in your rig and do it over and over again. Yep. It's, it's super convenient. So the bedroll has been around. I mean, Seth, you and I did a podcast at my buddy's cabin. Yeah, a long time ago, huh? That was the first episode. 2000. That was what, 2016, 17, something like yeah, that. Yeah. And Chad was like, you gotta, you gotta, you know, my buddy Chad from college, he's like, you gotta check the, this. And I was so, uh, uh against i'm like this is lame this yeah okay yeah. uh everybody has a bedroll this isn't special mm-hmm. also um you know real men backpack hunt anyway mm-hmm. and yeah. that was kind of my attitude yeah. <laughs> so yeah. seth you and your dad come down and and uh i'm skeptical but i'm like yeah i'll have them on as a favor to chad you know and mm-hmm. and then i climb in it I use it. I'm like, <laughs> well, so bad. This is, uh, I could see this. I could see the vision here. goes back to that Steve Jobs quote. People don't know what they want until oh, yeah. you tell them. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Um, I just didn't see it until I started to, to use, like you said earlier, uh, Sh- uh, Schaefer, that y- you, f- you find out, you know, once you have it, you realize how, how critical it is. Um, <clears throat> now it's fast forward. It's been a minute. Um, we're sitting in some cool little seats right here. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell it's best tell the bag. audience about these, these little bean bags. This is the dirt bag bean bag. Uh-huh. Um, it's the same canvas we make our bed rolls out of. So, and it's got taped seams. So you can throw it in your backyard for backyard furniture. You can have it inside your house for your kids to watch movies on and video games video games and <laughs> this is chill. shockingly comfortable it is yeah it? you can and like, you feel how warm your butt is it insulates like, too. i'm sitting here going <laughs> dude i feel like i'm just like nestled in yeah this imagine a long day of editing brian where you're just like maybe this isn't a good one to edit i feel on, like i'm half but, sleeping yeah. in this chair half <laughs> yeah it's side so of the soccer supportive. game at the yeah. campsite you know around the fire how much does it weigh a couple pounds once max. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's lighter than like a folding chair. Oh, oh yeah. definitely. Yeah. It is yeah. lighter than the only downside chair. is it's big. It is. It is big, but, but it's they're worth it. <laughs> they're not as yeah. big as like, uh, some of those larger bean bags, but oh no. no, it's not that big. I mean, what's nice is there's no structure to it. So you can just stuff it into like, I'm thinking of my cargo trailer throw a bunch of these in there for podcasting and, oh, yeah. and yeah. doing what I'm doing. Right. Cause yeah. I got the bunks on either end, but I have folding chairs that I kind of prop up. I would way rather chill in this. Oh, mm-hmm. they're sweet. They're, they are shockingly comfortable. You don't think they'll be that comfortable. And then they are, and people are loving them. So I could throw this in, them. uh, or like just throw it in all four of them in a bunk and you just toss them on the floor, wherever you want. Oh yeah. Yep. And just, yeah, Everybody outside. Sits down, they just outside. brush off if you throw them outside by the fire and stuff. How much does one of these run? 165. Man, this is nice. I am shocked. I, yeah. I, I, I'm not a beanbag guy usually. Mm-hmm. You're kind of usually falling I'm into not the a bag and either. it like shifts on you. This feels like almost like a molded, uh, yeah. sort of like a, um, you know, like a memory foam. Like I sit in it, it cupped me and it yes. hasn't shifted. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. We did a bunch of testing. Like my arms are supported. My like it just landed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And you can. I'm not gonna geek out too hard on you, but you can actually sit in it different ways. Yeah, for different applications. Like you can sleep on this hardcore by having your butt further down and your head back. Yeah, you get all the headrest support. You can sit more straight up by sitting in the middle of it, and it lifts your legs up, and it's super comfortable. There's it. Yeah, it's really cool. People how, love it. So prototyping and testing this, like how did you figure it out? Well, that's a great question. Um, we we had different sizes. Yeah. We thought about doing a really small one. Yeah. Yeah. That you could like glass off of even. Yeah. And then a really big one, we decided to go with a medium one. But we wanted to do our own proprietary blend of memory foam and styrene beads Okay. Um, to because the styrene beads are allowing it to do what it's doing right now, form to you because yeah. they'll move and then they stay. Memory foam is really heavy and it's really dense, 
but and, it packs down. So we wanted to have some yeah, that but it's more packable. Yeah. So we were like, could could we do a proprietary blend of the two? So we we tested that. Uh, we didn't want memory foam. It's too heavy. Um, really not bulky, not comfortable. They actually aren't comfortable. I know memory foam bean bags sell well, but everybody I know who owns one, they don't like it. It's heavy. It's dense. It's not comfortable. So we tried a little blend and it was okay, but it wasn't this. Yeah. And although we wanted to be cool and have that blend of our own <laughs> setup, we just went pure styrene beads. They're but if you go down They're the amazing. rabbit hole of foam, it's oh my word, it's quite something. It's a deep hole. Um, too. Amazon more or less has a monopoly, monopoly on polystyrene beads. So we had a manufacturer for our own beads set up, and when we went to figure out shipping for it, it would be on top of the product. It would be a hundred and eighty-five dollars just for shipping. The beads Whoa. weigh nothing. The box of beads weighs maybe two pounds right that's why yeah this, yeah a pound a pound and a half i think is what they weighed 185 dollars to ship it it's just a so volume we were thing. asking like well how is how is um big joe doing it on yeah. amazon yeah because yeah, it's yeah. 44 dollars free shipping and so our amazon guys looked into it and big joe is actually amazon so that's how they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So Amazon basically owns all the styrene bead comp bead companies on Amazon. So that's why they can do shipping. So if we were to come out with our own beads, we wouldn't be able to compete because it'd be so expensive. So we sell the the canvas, the dirt bag, mm -hmm. the canvas um, bean bag, and then you purchase your beads. And we have a link to go get your beads and tell you how much fill to get. It's pretty cheapest, easy to do. Yeah, cheapest, easiest way to do. Oh, super cheap. Yeah. 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 It's That's... actually cheaper than doing it all straight on Amazon. So Yeah. And so you get the outer shell, and then inside here is a mesh inner liner, uh -huh. and that's what the beads go in. So you can remove the beads completely, Spray hose down, down your canvas if you it. need to, and then put them back in. So plus it eliminates those beads if they get loose. <laughs> but but the how company you know has changed. They have done a little bit. How do you know how many beads to put in this? Um, you we recommend three to four hundred liters. So right now these have three hundred liters in them, and then once the air fully escapes the bean bag after a few weeks, uh -huh. you probably want to put fifty to hundred liters in, which takes you to to four hundred, and then okay. you'll be set for a while. But all right, that's pretty smart, boys. Yeah, yeah. you guys are pretty smart. <laughs> so so it, it, I can't. I mean, I'm I'm really enjoying this. Yeah, I'm surprised um, yeah. how nice this is. So, uh, what else have you guys got going on? Oh my word, Shafe, dude, we've got so much going on. <laughs> you got the, probably too much, honestly. Yeah. We got so much T in the works, me, but what is the most popular? Some of the most popular items you guys got uh, yeah. selling right now. So by far, you know, our flagship product is still the bedroll. Sure, um, and we've catered to this community for quite some time and wanted to make product products for the outdoorsmen. Yep. Specifically the, the hunting outdoorsmen. Um, but what we're finding now is we just love canvas and yeah. believe in canvas and our specific blend of canvas. We're really proud of. And, uh, people are starting to find out they're, they're starting to return back to those tried and true materials of yeah. canvas and leather and brass and those things. And so we want to become, as we grow a canvas company mm -hmm. and not necessarily create products specifically for the hunter or outdoorsman. And so in an effort to do so, we've got duffel bags that um, we've nice. designed to be great for travel. Mm -hmm. um, our smaller duffel bag, the burrow, it fits in an over, overhead compartment in a plane really easily. It's a compliant in that way. Always use it for travel. Um, but it's also the same material that we use for our bedrolls. So it's waterproof, mm -hmm. no dust, all that stuff is, is airtight in a sense. Um, we we're sitting in our stronghold wall tent mm -hmm. and this wall tent we're really proud of in that what differs from ours versus others is it's modular. So you're able to add sections to this wall tent depending uh -huh. on your party size or needs in the field so for instance we have a front door and a back door zip together that we're currently sitting in and that is a eight by 15 footprint 
And this is great for two guys. Yeah. But you yeah. put a third one in here, it gets tight, right? Yeah. So we have a middle section that would go in in between, and that it provides an additional four feet of length. And so we go in four foot increments. So we feel like our most popular footprint will probably be in that 16 by 15 footprint. Yep. And if you were to purchase that tent, you actually have three tents in one because you take a middle section out right. and now you're 12. Right. Take it out, put the doors together, now you're eight. And so on and so forth. And so we actually set them up in the backyard yep. and we had a 50 foot long wall tent and we had <laughs> doors instead of middle sections. So we all had our own room. So we had partitions <laughs> and it was awesome. Yeah. You know, we're like, this yeah, is well, sweet. this is how we're rolling from yeah. now on. And the way it's constructed is quite a bit different than other wall tents too. There's no sidewall seam, which always ends up leaking because that's where all the tension is if you guy line it out mm -hmm. or even if you have um an interior pole pole system it will wear out stretch and even tear i think you've had some tear yep. right yep. so there's no seams on the sidewall yeah, it just that. rolls over yeah and then they're they're guy lined out um change the eaves and different flaps um we could go on for quite the some flu, time on the little So the flu on thing. the stove is super cool too because right now it's made for this five incher, but we have on the outside, we have a cover that Velcro's over. So if you want to run a four inch or a smaller flu for your stove, more lightweight, it, it like will, seek it will fit in it. Yeah. So you can, you can change the flu jack. Yeah. A lot of the intention in designing this wall tent was for the backcountry hunter that has, that has, uh, you know, mules or horses yeah or even llamas mm -hmm. um but really you can break each of these sections zips apart and goes in its own carry bag so the door is 37 pounds the the back door is 36 the middle's 22 the all the poles are aluminum and they break down to four foot sections so and they have their own carry bag as well so i can load a mule with a 12 by 15 wall tent really easily and be under my my weight limit for that for that animal and so I can have a Taj Mahal in the back country, no problem, and have all the creature comforts that I would at base camp um, for the most part, right? And so a lot of that was with those guys in mind. And that's why we elected to go with the exterior pole set up with the guy lines out. We will in the future have an interior pole uh, for guys that just, you know, drive their truck to camp and want to just stay there. Yeah. Um, sometimes an interior pole is, is better in some ways, right? Yeah. And so we want to offer that opportunity and, and option. But, um, yeah, we're excited about it. Yesterday was the first day that it's more or less on sale to the public. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we have limited quantities. And we probably will be around that model in the future. We're thinking of doing a buy period. Yeah. Um, so the intent is to have a buy period. Usually I th we're thinking November to February. Yeah. So guys get their orders in. And then, you know, 9 to 12 weeks after that, we'll deliver the wall tent. And that'll be it for that year. Yeah. So yeah. we want to condition our audience and our customer base to, if you're interested in a wall tent, buy it during that period. And then, and then we'll make sure you have it before the season really gets kicked off. But, nice. um, yeah, it has so many features. I mean, we could do the whole podcast just on the wall tent, but, I, uh, yeah, I challenge anybody to find a better wall tent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, uh, can you t send people to, like a video breakdown yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, canvascutter.com. Uh -huh. well, on the Stronghold page, we have a video about setting up the tent, taking it down, all its features. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's cool. Cool. Yeah, yep. and when you when you order if if you order a section or uh like a 16 by 15 footprint, it comes with everything. That's the flooring, the poles, the guy lines, everything you need, the stakes everything. So it's really cool. So if your buddy wants to buy a front door and you buy the back door, and then you have another buddy who wants to buy a middle section, you guys can make a wall tent. It's cheaper for everybody. And that section will come with everything that you need. So, or if you have two, you know, you buy a 12 by 15, I buy a 12 by 15. You can put they them together. Zip together. All mm -hmm. of the segments mm -hmm. go together. Mm -hmm. So you and I can combine and all of a sudden we have this giant lodge. Yeah. You know, created. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah couple of guys each get their own and then yep. they can go together correct yeah. what about um your uh sort of um hot weather like bedroll setups yeah so, so the mesh yeah, yeah. because <clears throat> you know when we were in um arizona mm -hmm. yes. 
it's nice to sleep under the stars. Indeed. There are scorpions and spiders and snakes and stuff and those hotter climbs sometimes. Um, I don't want to pack a tent, uh, you know, and I don't want to actually set one up. Yeah. It's a yeah. pain in the butt. Right. And they're hot too. Yeah. Yeah, we probably don't talk about and tout the mesh as its standalone sleep system. But the mesh, you know, was developed to be an insert into the canvas bedroll. But also, it's a great standalone sleep system for what you just described. Yeah. Uh, you know, and if you're in a situation where you might get rain, a high line with a, a tarp over the top, you know, does it weighs more a than pound and a half. To... It has paracord D loops on the tub, so you can stake it down and tie it off even and then you can run it with the full length pull system or it also has paracord d loops at the head and the foot so you could guy line it to trees if you wanted to but i mean the pull system weighs in one more pound and most people f- prefer to just use it with the pull system but so yeah, for two I pounds myself, you get a really sweet sleep system like i can see it up here yeah i could see myself um <clears throat> on uh on those hot hunts or buggy hunts mm-hmm. yep Right. But you don't want, you don't, you don't need to, uh, you don't need a, a fly over this thing. Right. Yep. We run tarps mm-hmm. often. Like yep. the peaks just came out with a, we just came out with a really sweet tarp yeah. over there. Um, we bring a tarp on every hunt. And, uh, even when you're, you're truck camping. Yeah. To be able to throw that up and then, you know, throw a tarp over it if you do get a little drizzle. Yep. But it, like, lets that airflow come through, like, Definitely. in the spring yeah, and sweet. stuff. Because nice. I love cowboy camping. I love sleeping out under the stars. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I also like the idea of not getting bit by mosquitoes and <laughs> scorpions yeah. and stuff or well, snakes. Well, just or if you're, else. you know, just... if you're a power napper like myself yeah, that too flies will ruin a good nap absolutely and to get in there and have no flies and sleep it's nice there's, there's also a utah like arid climate <laughs> hunter right there right yeah, that's like yeah i i do relate there are some hunts uh i've been on where where uh but see september here elk season starts like mid-august yeah mm-hmm. it does yeah and there's cattle Mm-hmm. Everywhere and, there, and sheep. I've never come into more flies on an elk hunt oh, yeah. than I have here in Utah yeah. in my life. For sure. Yeah. And an afternoon nap was almost impossible. <laughs> it's it true. is. It's true. It's <laughs> annoying. You go inside your tent or your trailer, it's too hot. Yeah. You mm-hmm. find some shade, you're still getting flies on you. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Get one of those up the nose and tell me that didn't ruin your day. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's and pretty, then there's the, the summit. We have we've had the summit. It's a lighter version of our bedroll um it's the same footprint of our fortress canvas bedroll yep but it's made out of nylon so it's it's 2.3 pounds yep and um we're coming out this end of april ish may or first of may time frame with the summit 2.0 which is which we're really excited about about we've added done well but we've we've found that there are some things that we want to add to it um so we're in 2.0 like you were just going to describe, it's got some vents at the head and at the foot. Because it's nylon, we need to mitigate some of that greenhouse effect and, and you know, condensation that can build up. Mm-hmm. And we feel like we've done that. And then there's a few tweaks to it that just make it to where if it has a built-in mesh as well. Yep. But if you were to, you know, put a hole through your mesh in some way um, on the previous model, we'd have to either try to repair that mesh or just you'd have to replace the bedroll itself. But now we have mesh that zips out completely. So you can, re- so you can repair it. Just re- yeah. You can just, just buy, buy a new, new mesh and it, add it, it to your sleep panel. system yeah. instead hey. of replacing the whole thing. That's so little things cool. like that are just, you know, convenient and nice. There's We've a, removed some an seams, update to the pole system which is as super well. Cool as well, because seams equal weakness and yeah. also equal potential of leaking, even though they're taped. Yeah. Um, so we removed a bunch of seams so it's stronger, less places that it could even leak. Yeah. And so we're stoked about it. Yeah, we are. That one's exciting. And then we also have a bunch of horse tack that we're coming out with for guys who like to hunt or get outside 
um, on horses. We we have the Brumby, which is a cantle bag, and then we're coming out with some saddle bags and panniers as well. Yeah, we we have them teased here. Um, if they were available, I would have sold those all dang day yesterday. <laughs> and you know what's it's 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 um what's the word? It's gratifying in that there's a lot. I mean. A Western, a horseman and a hunter oftentimes are the same thing. Yeah. And when I was describing, we want to just be a canvas company. That's yep. what I'm talking about. Yep. We want products that will cater to the Western horseman, the, the beer and barbecue guy, the, the, uh, you know, the emergency preparedness individual, all that. Right. But what was neat to see yesterday is guys that know what they're talking about. Yeah. That have packed for years come up and I say, Hey, let me show you this. Let me show you why we did this, that, and the other. Yeah. And they're like, that's awesome. How, I want one. Can I buy one now? Yeah. It's like, no, get back in a few <laughs> months. We'll take care of you. But that's cool though. It is cool. It's cool to see, you know, that we've, we've tried to address, uh, some issues that I felt from my experiences were shortcomings in, in the yeah. current offering. And, uh, I think we've done a good job so far. There are some yeah. tweaks that we all, that we've identified even yesterday yeah. that we want to make just from input from, yeah. People attending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, um the one thing that's interesting is when I met you, Seth, um, your dad was kind of selling some bedrolls out of the garage. Yeah. Basically. Yep. Uh he just had a vision for it, saw that it was needed. Uh, he he himself was like, This is a cool thing. Fast forward to today and what what you built, it's pretty amazing off of that one product. Yeah, you thank know. you. Now, fast forward all these years, um, you you know you have a full blown um, business, yeah. and it's it's neat to see it. What you know for those that are starting a business, um, you know I can I can see how you guys have have marketed, uh, and I can see how you guys are working hard to innovate, come up with new new items. But now you're also expanding, perhaps your customer base, mm -hmm. like you said mm -hmm. by targeting not just hunters but horsemen yeah um, anybody who anybody... appreciates high quality gear yeah like who can't use a really good duffel bag our our burrow duffel i know it's going to be biased because it can't be it can't not be biased yeah. i mean because it's coming from me but you're going to have a hard time finding a better duffel bag that has the features that it has yep. i mean from boot pocket that you can also use as dirty clothes pocket. It's got a laptop sleeve that you can use for other things. A standard, a couple standard uh, duffel bag pockets, hideaway backpack straps. Mm -hmm. So when you're traveling, it's super comfortable. It wears like a backpack, not like a saggy bag. Um, the mule duffel is its bigger brother. It's um, a hundred liter bag and it's got two pockets that you can use for dirty clothes, but it also has a, hard plastic sleeve mm -hmm. in the bottom of it. So when you have a lot of weight, which you're going to with that size of bag and you're carrying it over your shoulder, it has, it stays flat, which actually makes it a lot easier to carry. And it also has hideaway backpack straps that sit in the middle. So it distributes the weight properly and it's super comfortable to wear even loaded. So it, it's kind of an underrated duffel bag, I think for, for the size that it is, but Everything that we make is for people who like high quality gear that's going to last. And our canvas is a material that allows that to happen. I have, we, so we came out with an origins film, a film mm -hmm. about how canvas cutter came to be in my dad. And he shows in that film, mm -hmm. one of the first bedrolls that he, he made, it was either the, the first or second bedroll. Yeah. And it's crazy yeah. to think like this guy who's passionate about hunting and the and the outdoors in his basement mm -hmm. doesn't know how to sew buys a sewing machine and is like <laughs> makes this yeah this product that's that has it's it's morphed into this it, yeah. it's it is super awesome As, and it's still around you could use that bedroll it's 24 years old and you <laughs> can use that bedroll well so you know this is sort of a more of an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial uh, business type question, you know, what has been one of the the things that surprised you the most looking back on your journey? What's that thing that sort of stands out as, 
I had no idea. And, and, uh, I can think of for me, like what the public wants, right? right. You gotta be able to adapt right. over time. Like I think I have this hunch turns out I was totally wrong. This, sure. you know, e- even in, um, gear, you know, I, I have used gear. I've worked with a lot of different companies and I go, Oh man, if, if we partner on this, uh, people want this product. You, I, I could sell the heck out of that product. I love it. Everyone's going to want it. And then I share it and nobody buys it. Yeah. And I'm like, how could I be so wrong? Mm-hmm. And then some other dude comes up to me, kind of like you and that trekking pole guy, Bryce <laughs> over at Peaks. Yeah. Hey, here's some trekking poles for hunting. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Dude, okay, whatever. Give me the poles. Nobody's going to want these, but I'll. I'll sell them because you support hunting and you're a hunting guy and they're, they're probably okay. Let me try them. Let me yeah. try them first. And then I tried them. And I'm like, they're awesome, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of great polls, right? I had no idea though. Um, I had no idea how many people would value that particular poll in that way. That's crazy. Uh, it's what I wanted the other manufacturers to make, but didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, just mm-hmm. carbon fiber upper, aluminum lower. There were brands that had that. It wasn't like Peaks was the only one at the time. But they're the only ones, I think, with clip locks. Others were yep. twist. Yep. They had a few other features that just annoyed the crap out of me. But I still didn't think that was enough to get a whole community in on that one thing. Mm-hmm. And yet it did. So I have stopped trying to guess <laughs> what is going to, like, satisfy the public Mm -hmm. and what is not nowadays when someone approaches me with an idea and says you know try this product i'm so much more open-minded than i used to be yeah because i'm like i i've 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 guessed wrong so many times i really can't i can't tell you i think a thing but i i'm so much more humble than i was before yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) We have, during our product development meetings, we have a laundry list. I mean, it's probably, it's too long of things that we want to. Ideas. Develop. Like, that we think would do well. well. But the reality, the, the, the commonality in that list is it's gear that we want. Yeah. And so I think a lot of that is, is we, like the bedroll was built out of a necessity for Sheryl. Yeah. Right. It was, he wanted some simple way to get out of a Thunderbuster when he's showing up to the book cliffs in the middle of the night after work, yeah. right? He just needed something. And so he created that. And it's like a lot of the stuff that we have now or going to have, it's just what we want. And we hope that we can showcase that to others and they f- identify in the same way and yeah. want it as well. Like this wall tent, there's plenty of wall tents out there, right? But this is the style that I wanted. Yeah, I want to be able to put it on a mule and take it in the back country. I want to be able to make it grow. Exactly. Or yeah. shrink it when I don't need that much. That's room. how it starts. So, you know, looking back now, yeah. What surprised you? That's such a good question. Yeah. So many things. Um, I think when you first said that, I think what surprised me is that we could go from a bedroll mm-hmm. to dirt bags and duffel bags, and a wall tent, and the amount of growth we we can, still can have and that we have had, I think, has been the biggest surprise. And just just the amount of work, too. I think people, it's easy for people to look at Brian Call and be like, man, I want to do that. That's yeah. so cool. Got the dream life. They because they don't see you for eight hours a day and yeah, yeah, a, for sure. a monster later. That's, that's true. Grinding in front of a computer, they don't see Schaefer and I. Like, what five million things do we do every well, I single day? I didn't have just gray to, hairs in this beard. Before. Just to <laughs> to make this function a little bit. Yeah, and. Yeah, P- I I think that was the biggest surprise is it's still so much work. We've been working so hard to get it to where it is. And I oftentimes forget that perspective to look back and be like, hey, you know, we've made some progress. Yeah. Like we've done some good things. I'm so focused 
on like <clears throat> what needs to be done and and the growth we could be having that sometimes I've got to stop I've, and smell the roses a bit. Yeah. 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 It's cuz it's still a grind. Like people might walk by our booth and be like wow these guys are lucky like they have all this gear and they have this great company and brand and we are lucky and we do have great gear and an awesome brand but it it takes a lot of sacrifice to to do it yeah we were talking about this uh yesterday brad and i um with a group of guys that are all entrepreneurs there's something about um if you fail, you don't eat. And if you, if you win, you keep all the reward, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. uh, we were, I was having that conversation with, uh, doc Hillary Lampers mm -hmm. and she's like, well, you know, I get to go to work. I get paid. I go home. It's not my problem. Yeah. Whether there's patients, whether there's this, whether there's that, like it's not, I get paid and I go home. I also can't really scale a whole bunch up from where I'm at, but I, but I also don't have to deal with any of the headache. Yeah. You know, so the versus her other business with R Lampert, with Ryan, mm -hmm. which is, you know, stealthy hunter products and yeah. nutrition. And it's like, wow, you know, that they don't deliver, they don't eat right. on that line. And right. there's a, there's a whole set of motivations and drive. And there's a combination of fear and excitement yep. that keeps you dedicated to the process in a way that you just don't when all your eggs aren't in that basket. Yeah, there's no plan B. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's no, there is no bridges have been burned. It's only like, yeah, go forward. Yeah. There's no going back. Nope. Yeah. I, nope. I feel that way um, as well. And it, it causes me to innovate all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, just because you have, like I create, I hope the goal is to create, create, uh, and share video and film podcast content that inspires, motivates, and educates yep. people. That's the goal, and I work really hard at it. And over time, you realize like what what people want, what they don't want. But there's always in my mind like a need to get my ideas out the door mm -hmm. and to deliver because when you stop, so does, so does the revenue stream exactly. as well. <laughs> yeah. And there's a combination of rewards that come from owning my own business and creating what I feel is more of an art, like a hunting film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm the sort of person that would kind of do that for free if I could. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Like I, I, and I'll do it for very little money because I want to do it. If I can find a way to justify yeah. my lifestyle, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. yep. So I can live the life I want doing what I love, but also, you know, turn it into an income source as well. Yeah. But there's something about like the passion to do the thing and to share that and, and the art and the, the desire to, 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 to be that, to do that kind of thing combined with you're all in there's no backup plan it has to succeed you have to find a way brian yeah. you have to find a way and i think if you can consistently deliver on your business your entrepreneurial business over time you don't have to be the smartest businessman you don't have to be certainly the, not the best at you know all, all these marketing and so on consistency and hard work hard work will yeah, take you there over yep. time yep and i think most though quit yep i often look around though and i think i see a friend of mine he's like come on out flies me down to a place we get wine and dine and he's worth millions mm -hmm. and i'm like there's easier ways to make money yeah like i sure am not picking the right the easy way you do yeah. not know how many times i've had that Thought. Yeah, there's way there, easier ways to make money. It is, it my brain feels like ah oh, when I think about you know it'd be really easy to step away, yeah, and not have all the headaches and not deal with all the stress and everything, but then you also are stepping away from the reward of providing really awesome products for people that's yeah. going to last that like meets a need 
and the reward of creating something that people appreciate, like, yeah, you can walk away from the hard, but then you're also walking away from like a really rewarding, satisfying yeah. I have thing. a collection of hunts that is like m- worth more than money could ever buy yeah. that I have created of adventures I've been on mm-hmm. over the last decade Yeah, that I hope to continue for some time that people have benefited from. But also my own family, oh, yeah. my grandkids, my great grandkids, so they'll, awesome. they'll all have that. I don't think you can put a dollar no price tag on that. And also, you know, money over time, money has seemed to mean so little as I've gotten older in the sense that uh, I want enough for to be free. But I realized a long time ago that real freedom is being able to go and do what you love to do. And it actually doesn't take that much money to do it do it yep it it it, you know i i get to go on so many hunts for so many weeks in a row uh and it goes back to like it was gary v said um would you rather be crying in a porsche or smiling in a camry (laughs) you know and if you could just get happier Mm -hmm. with having a little less you would then discover some incredible lifestyle blessings you know by being content with less it's more you know and i and i think of dave ramsey a lot where where he talks about how yeah you might be you know like a podcaster like let's say me you're in this run and you're doing your thing and there's a million other dudes doing the same thing yep but or filmmaking might be a better example hunting films but you you go at it for a decade because it's your tr- passion, two decades. And pretty soon you're in the top 2% mm-hmm. in that category. And then before you know it, like, yeah, you spent a couple of decades not really making the money that you could have. But now that you're in the top 2%, there's a whole influx of of, of wealth that comes because you became the best in that area because of you showed up you showed up Mm -hmm. and so i look now where i am starting to build some serious wealth in the last two or three years before it was hand to mouth Mm -hmm. just straight up hand to mouth and even now the wealth is there but it's like elon musk he doesn't get that money till he sells it Mm -hmm. you know he doesn't get the stock from tesla until he cashes in so he's still in a way you 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 have the equity, but you're still cash poor. Sure. Oh, yeah. You still, yeah. you know, live <laughs> off of barely anything. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. in that boat, right? Like yep. this has become something that, that of value, but it's not, it's not, it's not money in your pocket today. Right. That's right. But it is a potential retirement or just a much larger income in a decade. Yeah. So I find it um, something about owning and running your own business and the freedom that comes with it. I would rather be poor and free oh, all day. than rich and chained. Absolutely. All day. Yeah. There's a tremendous amount of gratification that comes from creating something, whether it be, you know, what you do or what we do, and people receive it and and use it yeah. and find value in it. That money can't buy that. I have a movie night tomorrow. This was an epic adventure. With Brady Miller and Ryan Lampers. Mm-hmm. Backpack hunting for moose in like grizzly infested Alaska in the middle of nowhere. The adventure was incredible. The feats, the moose, the experience was so deep, you know, and with two awesome people that I got to just bond with and, and hang out with. And um, our friendships just they're different because of those shared suffering and those shared experiences. And then I get to come home and, and produce it right. And try to try to convey that to the world Mm -hmm. through, through this medium, through this film medium. And, uh, we sold tickets to this theater and, and, and to see it on the big screen and to tell Brady's story, this is really to, to share Brady's moment, you know, Mm -hmm. and to be a part of that and able to produce that and to share it. It gives me so much, 
personal satisfaction. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that, you know, you get it there. I'm more excited about sharing this and putting it on a big screen, lights down low with a whole ton of people who get it, like me, that then walk away inspired. That to me is worth more than money could ever yep. absolutely provide. Yeah. And so, and it's something that money can't just buy. Yep. I can't, you can't just buy the ability to go backpack for moose, get one, pack it out, film it, carry it out. Like you can't buy that. You yep. you have to do it mm-hmm. yeah. to, 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 to have it and it, for it to be yours. And, you know, so I don't, I don't know. I find like the reward of what I do. It's, it's so funny. I think people who are entrepreneurial or, or are artistic in a, in certain ways, then the day we get so much value, personal satisfaction out of the creation of what we do that we do the damn thing for free. Well, yeah. It, yeah and so it's hard. It's easy to get, used for free <laughs> for and sure. at great risk yeah. too yeah yeah and uh and so you're like I, it's hard it's been hard for me to develop the business side because when somebody's like we want you to film this hunt and go do this thing and then and i'm like i'll do it just to be there yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but that doesn't pay for my kids school yeah. and yeah. all this kind of stuff right yeah so it's like okay brian you gotta back up you got to, they have something they want to value. They want you to do, and you have a skill set that they, they need. And as, as the sort of person I am, I have to like force myself to like, try to work out a, 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 a financial side to <laughs> right. this. Right. The responsible yeah. side. Yeah. Of it. yeah. And, uh, I was really bad at that really in the beginning, <laughs> especially yeah. take me hunting. Okay. All right. You know? And so, um, you know, but all of that has been because of, the willingness to be an entrepreneur and to throw everything in and, and just be like, if it's me or, and I, I get all the reward by the way. Yep. Like I haven't made a lot, but I'm poised to make a lot but and I, I get to what, keep it all. I don't yeah. know what your previous, you know, work history is. I do know yours. It was really good. Um, you were doing good. I was like, IT governance officer. Well, the thing is, is I was doing Fortune good as 500. well, but I was at a big corporate yep. dealing with big corporate politics and yep. climbing that ladder and yep. basically eating crap. Every you know day what? To... You know what would happen if Canvas Cutter <laughs> disappeared today? Despite all the headaches it gives me and the amount of stress and lack of sleep. I'd sell my house and start another company. I know. Yeah. That's how I feel too. Like, yeah. Because once you're in that other side of the table and then you get a taste of this life and the satisfaction, the gratification we're talking about, it's true. There's no other option. I think complacency <laughs> is the enemy of, of, of achievement. Yeah. Oh, right? for like, sure. Absolutely. The old six figure income just, it was, I could have ridden that and I wouldn't have what I did this last decade. Right. And I look at the places I've been around the world, the people I've met, the yeah. things I've done. It's mm-hmm. like crazy, man, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have had any of that. Had I not rolled the dice and just gone in. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And that is what makes it. You can't, you can't put a dollar on that. Can I, no way. You, you know, you asked, you know, what surprised you? I was, I've been contemplating that. I think at the end of it, it's, we have this unwavering, um, dedication to, to quality. Yeah. Right. And people, when you put out a quality product, in a, in a way it surprised me that people are able to recognize that quality and grow to support that quality in that we get emails all the time from individuals are like, Hey, can you make a, can you make me a canvas poncho? Just because I really use ponchos a lot. And I know how I have this other product you have that it's so high quality. I trust mm-hmm. you guys to make this need, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's like that surprises me that, and it shouldn't, it shouldn't. If you put out a good product, people are smart enough to identify it yeah. and get behind it. And then if you just keep doing that yeah. and showing up, that is a recipe for success. Yeah, people, it's funny. So Schaefer and I are like family. Mm-hmm. But some people get surprised during product development meetings or other meetings because Schaefer doesn't hold back Mm -hmm. and I don't hold back because we both give a damn. Yeah. 
We both want the best. So people will think we're arguing on silly things like zipper or how a flap should go or a pocket. And we're not arguing. We're figuring out we're what's best. We're passionately talking. <laughs> we're passionately figuring out what's best. Yeah. And you know what's funny is we'll go on for like an hour, different subject, and we're right back to just like, hey, let's, hey, we should go yeah, golfing. Back we to family. Go. And yeah. then we get back to the product or, or the day, a, a day goes by and I'm like, oh crap, Schaefer was right. Schaefer was right. It just clicked. The bulb just clicked or vice versa. Right. And we have no ego of like, Who's right or wrong? We just want the best because I, that's what people need. That's what they deserve. I tend to have uh, difficulty working with certain, with many people, most people. Yeah. When yeah. we're in the grind, because I have a certain quality that I want captured on film. I have a certain quality of what I want produced, edited, and so forth. I have a certain level of that uh, vision that I have that yeah. I want executed. And so when I'm, what I don't have, I have such a drive to accomplish that particular set of goals that I don't have time for your feelings. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I truly just don't yeah. give a rat's ass about <laughs> how you feel. I don't care if you hurt. I'm not. I'm impervious to being hurt by you, by the yeah. way, <laughs> yeah. because I'm so focused on the the production and getting it done. So. I will just rip into like some edit Brad has been working on. Like, what were you thinking? That is the dumbest. And I'm not trying to be mean. Yeah. I'm like, and this is how this, da, 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 da. and then he'll yell back at me. And I'm like, and I'll yell back at him. And we're just fighting over this thing. And I'm mm -hmm. like, and, and uh, we'll go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then we just keep working and keep yes. working because it wasn't about, um, I wasn't thinking about his emotions, feelings, thoughts, anything no, whatsoever. Yeah. I was thinking accomplished goal. Yep. yep. And I think men in general, like highly driven men are built that way anyway. Sure. Yep. And so thankfully he's also a driven man too. And so he doesn't get overly bent out of shape yeah. over the fact that yeah. I just ripped his head off. Yeah. And you weren't doing it to hurt his feelings. No. You're doing it because you know what product needs to come out and the quality. And and, and I did allow myself to vent frustration. <laughs> yeah. Right. Which I have been working on. So now it's less of the venting and more of the just tackling of the, the issue. Yeah. But your feelings are so unimportant to me. Yeah. They just are so unimportant to me, even on the hunt. And that's why Lampers is nice because we just, we just like are so goal oriented and we just, we don't, we don't, we don't care about each other's feelings deeply yeah. generally. Yeah. It's not something that we have to like, if there's this criticism, he can just say it and I can yeah. just say it. And, and neither one of us are, cause the goal is more important than yeah. it's just, it's just supersedes all that other stuff. Well, and then it's like a team trying to win a, a game. It's like, if everybody really wants to win, exactly then the criticisms aren't really that hurtful yep because you're like oh yeah yeah you're right you're grateful yeah. for it yeah i was that was stupid what was yeah if you're yeah. if your heart is really in it for the greater good of whatever you're doing canvas yeah, cutter or whatever then feelings aren't necessarily they're not brought into it right because yeah. i can we can reset five minutes later yeah we can be at each other's throat really passionately speaking and then but i've had people i've worked with and any criticism at all. Oh, you can't do oh, it. And they yeah. fall apart. Yeah, most yeah. people, you actually can't. That's well, it is. It is hard to do something like this with mm -hmm. other people. Yeah, because it's easy to do it. Well, it's easier to do it by yourself to an extent because you don't have to appease everybody. That's why, like, Shafe's been so huge to the team and to the growth and. And as a business partner, because he cares enough to not yeah. get his feelings hurt and yeah. he cares enough to say whatever I need to hear. Well, and it's so refreshing because you work with so many different people and that you could never yeah, have that conversation or if, talk like that because 
if their feelings I, would be hurt. Like in the corporate world, I'd have to come to the person, praise them, all the things they do right. You do <laughs> such a good <laughs> yeah. job. Yeah. This yeah. is so good. And you're yeah. really good at this da, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And then say, there is an issue, I think, that perhaps maybe maybe <laughs> yeah. could be improved upon. Yeah. You know, and, and I hate to mention it, but let's there's just this little thing and and then you like <laughs> gently deliver it to them. Yeah. Yeah. And and then they're still upset over the criticism. Yes. And then you have to come back with, but also you're so incredible about all <laughs> yeah, this other yeah. stuff. And you like cap it off. So there's like yep. this Yeah, you gotta bookend it. <laughs> yeah. And my I and I have I know this might surprise you, but I have no patience <laughs> for that. <laughs> I just want to say what I think when I think it, the way I think it, and move on, and not oh, worry oh. about, you know, having to prep you and yep. like coddle you. And I just feel, find it so unmanly. Oh, yeah, and I, that same thought is, we want to scale this thing, we want to grow it, but also I only want to grow it within a certain bound. I don't want to get so big that I've got this. HR, HR department, department breathing yeah. down my neck, right? It's, yeah. So <laughs> yeah. I love the small business. We control everything in a sense. We do need help. We're going to grow. We're going to add individuals to the team, but hopefully we can add those right individuals and, and keep this same yeah. style because it is so critical. You start getting <laughs> yeah. beyond those bounds and what you just described is how you have to act. And there's no efficiency in that. There's not. I, I have always been anti beating around the bush. Yeah. I hate when people do it to me. Right. Like, no, just tell me what's wrong. But that's a culture. That's a, that's a, that's, that's the, uh, you know, go out and slay the animal and bring it home mentality. Yeah. There's a lot of, most people, a lot of people are not built that way. Um, they're there to get their check and then to come home and, yeah. you know, and they're not wired uh, the same way. And so, um, and they take a lot of things personal. Mm -hmm. I, that's where I, I just, uh, you get cut out of my life generally. You, <laughs> yeah. Like you'll still be an acquaintance, but you're not like <laughs> tight. Yeah, you're yeah. not in the circle. Yeah. Don't have time for it. No, yeah. no. And and I have six sisters and I, I grew up in a house full of women yeah. and feelings matter, you know, in yeah. that situation. And so there is, I mean, I know how to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. and not, not all, but many, um, like with my wife, I don't handle the, the I don't handle our interaction no. this way. Yeah, no. no way. But with Ryan and Brad, I do. Yeah. You know? And uh, I think for a good entrepreneurial, like a good business to really take off, when you're both uh, locked in on the same goal set, that's what happens. It's just like you can fight, argue, whatever. No one cares. We have some drag out arguments over at peaks over some stuff as ryan and i are testing we go back to the de product development guys and we're just like no no <laughs> and then they come up with a solution and we're like that's dumb yep. and they're like just try it and but there's no there's brutal fights but not nobody has their feelings hurt it's just yeah. honesty yeah just being honest the thing we're, we're talking about a mentality to be an entrepreneur and things that you know we do that we have found provide success in a way the one thing that i don't want to ever do is become that entrepreneur that just is so focused on the goal that will railroad people in the in along the way yeah. i always canvas cutter needs to always be a business run by good guys who generally care and are genuine yeah and i we want to make a difference in people's lives, legit. Yeah. And in fact, you know, behind the curtain, really, we want to grow this to a point where we are proud and satisfied yeah. and maybe step away to just do bigger things yeah. in different ways. Yeah. And it really, maybe some people roll their eyes at this, but the whole purpose of this is to get us to a point where we can eventually serve in a different way. Yeah. That may not include money. Yeah. Right. Um, so th that, that is also critically yeah. important as an entrepreneur is we've all been part get of it businesses. done, be, be a good guy along the way. Yeah. We've all been part of businesses where, um, where, uh, you get stabbed in the back, screwed over, yeah. used, lied yeah. to as, as that corporation or that group g garners more and more success. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm just not wired that way either. Um, it, I don't. The means, uh, 
matter. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I, I, how I get there matters to me yep. as much as that I get there. Absolutely. And I've, I've been on the phone with partners and people that are like, winning is winning. It doesn't matter how I won. And I'm like, that's where we're different. Yep. Yeah. That's where you go your way and I go mine because I don't want to win if I cheated to win. Absolutely. Yep. I, it means it's empty. It's hollow. It's yep. meaningless to me. Yes. I want to do what I find meaningful. That means I want to win, but I, how I do it absolutely matters. Absolutely. And yeah. <laughs> so before yeah. this got became official, yeah, my dad, like you mentioned, he was sewing these in the basement, yep. working for the Union Pacific Railroad. And he would make about 50 at a time. That's what he could make with a roll of fabric. And he would set them there. And they would sell by word of mouth. Just friends of friends and family buying them. And he would sell 150, 200 in a year. And he would save the majority of that money. So he'd take some of it to buy more product, yep. buy fabric to make more. And then he would set aside the rest. And every year at Christmas time, he would take all of it. And give it to families who have kids and who are having a hard time so that they could have a Christmas. That's what he would do with it. So that's where it started. And we want to do things like that. Yeah. We want this to be a means to beyond gear, beyond the outdoors, have a positive effect on real life yeah. on when, when life's not great, when, you know, kids are dealing with leukemia or, food even yeah. right so um yeah we want to do a lot of things like that yep I cutter hear cares yeah cutter cares man. cutter cares <laughs> yeah. well guys as always uh i love sitting down with you guys i love the brand that you're building thank you thank you and uh i hope you have massive success continued success where can people find canvas cutter Everywhere Canvas Cutter. So Instagram, Facebook, canvascutter.com, YouTube. Put in Canvas Cutter. Yes, yeah. Sir. Yeah. Go check us out on YouTube. We actually have a few decent films, short films. We're going to do a, a lot more. Yep. Um, so we're excited about that. Deals. Any deals going on? Sales? Oh, yeah. Stuff like that? Yeah. yeah. So for the expo, the stronghold is 15% off. And we're not a big deal business. Yeah. Right, we don't we don't discount our stuff a lot. Fifteen percent is probably as deep as you're going to find it. Yep. Um. So we have fifteen percent off the stronghold, and then on our our most popular product, our Dominator bedroll. It's the larger of the two canvas bedrolls. We're doing full length pulls for free, so that's a hundred and fifteen dollar value that you'll you'll save. And um, am I missing anything else with can that? We, can this extend a little bit after the expo? Yes, it will. It will for the Dominator. Uh, full length pulls and we yep. might entertain it with those stronghold yeah okay yep okay yep i'll uh try to share this podcast right away and um yeah take, if you are days. interested i would take advantage of that because that's 115 dollars off your order and we don't do we don't do that <laughs> yeah very often yeah. so until until probably uh the middle of march and then that that will be done but right on. Awesome. Thanks for the All time. All right, guys. Yeah. Thanks for tuning Thank in, you. folks. Stay ready, folks.